Hey everybody, welcome to episode 2 of the Avion Electronics blog. Um, as you may know, may, may, may or may not know, uh, Avion Electronics is reintroducing our video blog YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot of experiments, electronic repairs and putting those on video for you guys to see, uh, to explore along or to build along. Uh, I've re sort of awakened my love of electronics and sharing so please do watch this space and we'll see a lot more new things coming on as we go. Uh, for today I thought well I haven't done a review in a while so maybe it's time I did a multimeter review. So in this episode 2 I've decided to do a review of my good old Fluke 87 V or 5 multimeter being one of my favorite multimeters on the bench. And um, let's get into that review and uh, see what it's all about. Hey everybody. Right, so I've done many reviews in the past on various multimeters, but today I thought, well, let's have a look at one of my favorites. Um, excuse the distortion, the camera I'm using isn't necessarily the best for this sort of review, but you'll get the idea. As you can see, if I hold it straight, uh, the meter is more rectangular than what it is, sort of top heavy. Um, but yeah, you get the gist of it. Fluke 87 Series 5, true RMS multimeter. Why do I love this meter so much? Well, for numerous reasons. One of them being, it does all the sort of measurements you would usually need to do. Uh, but one of my favorite features of it is when you're doing precision voltage measurements, you can go into your standard mode. And then if you push and hold this button, you go into what we call the high res mode, which will give you 0.0001 of a volt. Quite handy for when you're doing very precision measurements and, and, and that sort of thing. But let's get into the basic review of this meter and do a, do a few reference voltage checks, um, check out how it works uh, and, and, and let's see what it's all about. So let's get going. Right, so just getting on to some basic voltage measurements uh, with this meter. At the moment I've got it hooked up to my DC supply. Um, I can try and show it to you in the background. There it is up there. Um, I've got it set to zero. Uh, as you can see there is a small amount of voltage coming out of this uh, power supply even set to zero so let's have a look see how it goes right so as we go up in voltage you'll notice um, we can measure like 250 or 100 let's say that's 217 millivolts that I'm outputting at the moment from the power supply now if we were to go to high resolution mode we could see it's 216.5.6 millivolts, not 217, but that's really nitpicking. But I mean, for setting bias and transistors and stuff, that might actually come in handy. And then as we go up, I just want to show you the scaling of this meter. We've still got three decimal places, three decimal places, which is really lovely. So we're currently sitting in the 3000 count. 4,000 count, 5,000 count, 6,000 count. Ah, so it is a 6,000 count multimeter, but as you can see, it goes a little bit higher than 6, and then when it drops sort of below, let's see, about 5 volts, drops back, and then let's try and see where it kicks over. And we're still climbing. I think it'll be about 6.6. Six. So it's actually a 6,600 count technically. But bearing in mind, we still have the high resolution mode, which we can hit. And what does that give you? Again, three digits. So now let's see how far we can go in the high resolution mode. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And um, I read in the, in the technical specs, I think this is 20,000 count in the high resolution mode, which is really nice. I mean, you can get very accurate voltages from this, um, as you can see right from there, it drops down. Now, if we go out from the high resolution mode, we still have our two decimal places. But if we go into high resolution mode here, we still have two decimal places. So. I think from about 20 volts there really is no difference with that high resolution mode. It's more for measuring very low voltages. Um, this power supply tops out at just on 30 volts, so uh, 
as you can see there's a little, as soon as you go over 30 volts you get this little high voltage warning over here a uh, little lightning bolt to tell you that you're now in the high voltage region uh, to start being cautious so yeah that's pretty nice uh, how it works uh, as far as resistance and stuff I mean there's not much to talk about when it comes to these meters over here um, they are fantastic they're a legend in their own right so why do I prefer this meter to your Fluke 177 or any of the others for that matter well simplicity firstly this meter is simple to use uh, it has all you need um, you've got your volts AC as well as your low impedance volts AC um, for measuring some sort of circuit you may need the low impedance mode you've got your volts DC you've got your millivolts DC your temperature you've got your traditional ohms you've got your capacitance which you'd hit this button here to change to such like that um, and then of course you've got your beep your continuity tester as you can see it's very responsive and very quick which is fantastic for making measurements then of course you got your diode test your traditional diode test you got your milliamps and amps AC and then more uh, and of course you've got DC as well and then more importantly microamps AC and DC so as you can see that's a lot of functionality something of interest for those that um, do resistance measuring you can contact in your resistance scale and as you can see my leads are measuring 0 0.1 ohms you can delta them out zero the meter so now when you make a resistance measurement you're getting a spot-on accurate measurement of what the resistance really is um, if you're really measuring down to that sort of accuracy not always needed but the option is there um, you can manually range this meter you can auto hold at the highest it can do Hertz as well as um, duty cycle but what we're going to do now is we're going to hook up my PWM generator and let's see how the Hertz and duty cycle actually works out okay so right now I've hooked up my Evian PWM generator. It's um, sort of my own little DIY device which I use for when I want to generate PWM. I do have a function generator but this just makes it easier uh, for testing circuits on the go and such. Um, I am running it off my DC power supply at the moment because I don't have a battery in it. But um, let's take a look. Okay, so now this, um, as you may know, like on your Arduinos for example, this thing's based on Arduino. You've got a value from zero to 255. Um, that would be your range for PWM. So let's start going. As soon as we start turning on, we're seeing a voltage. Ah, I forgot to mention, you've got to push this Hertz button. And there you can see, we know by default the Arduino outputs 490.2 Hertz um, for PWM. Uh, where this is useful is for doing that, that, that measurement to see what sort of range you're getting, but more so for duty cycle. As you can see, as we decrease the duty cycle to zero, now we go one, two, three, all the way up. And as we let that increase, you can see the increase in the numbers over here. Um, that's out of 255. We can see we're going up. And you can see your duty cycle going up. So 255, 256 technically. So 128 should be roughly 50%. So let's let that scroll up to 128. Um, still running <coughs> as you can see 42 43 percent 120 6 7 8 128 we're more or less halfway 50% duty cycle or 50.2 because it is slightly over remember it's 0 to 255 not 1 to 256 so as you can see this is useful for checking your duty cycle of your PWM signals as well as your frequency which is really cool um, useful for many things if we check the actual voltage output on AC we're getting 2.5 volts um, of AC voltage uh, but if we go to DC we should be getting 2.5 because we're halfway as we know PWM it's a switching signal I, th I have explained it on an oscilloscope before but I will do it again um, in later tutorials now as we come down you'll see this voltage will drop 
off to zero or if we go up it'll go climb up to five volts at the peak because this is being a five volt arduino um, simply put yes this meter is useful for doing all that sort of basic testing very handy um, useful uh, and definitely does the work uh, what more could you actually need you asked for reasons why i love this meter that was one of them the microamps is another the responsiveness is another and the high resolution mode definitely another so yes that's the basic review now let's just take a look at one more thing the backlight on this it's got two levels as far as readability goes i'm just going to throw the light off here it's definitely readable um, in the dark uh, no issues at all very nice meter all around this meter has made me very happy and it's the primary meter on my bench despite owning several fruk 177s um, bremens and such this is still one of my favorite meters so guys very short review, very basic review of the Fluke 87.5. Um, if you find one of these guys, pick it up. This specific meter I picked up for 900 Rand at a local secondhand shop. Did some tests on it, everything is within spec, had it aligned, calibrated, everything is beautiful. This meter is fantastic. It needed a bit of a clean when I got it, but um, now that it's been cleaned up, I'm very happy with it and uh, really enjoying making use of it. So. Not bad for the first intro video. So guys, have a good weekend. Uh, weekend's coming up and have a fantastic week further. I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Okay, so just putting it all into perspective, um, the Fluke 87 Series 5, definitely a meter worth having if you can find one in good condition, um, second hand, or alternatively, I do believe they have released a new version of this meter, um, which works very well. Um, this was due to an issue with uh, RF from mobile phones being somehow induced into the circuitry or the microcontroller on these meters causing them to go a little bit haywire and in some cases I heard from Dave Jones's blog that the meters were possibly bricked whether this is true or not I don't know but um, I've never had an issue with it but then I don't leave my cell phone standing next to my meter anyway so yes fantastic meter if you can get your hands on one by all means buy it you won't look back and um, yeah that's about it um, just a few things to note before I close off on this video uh, this meter has got its original fluke uh, sort of rubber casing installed uh, you can remove it but um, I'm not going to bother with that um, all in all I'm very happy with it so get yourself one you won't look back um, compared to the fluke 177, 179s, this meter is so much more. It can do a lot more than those meters can, and it can measure a lot wider range, especially in the lower voltages when you're working with electronics and microelectronics. Um, look, the Fluke 177 is a nice meter, but by all means, this one will definitely kick its butt. So guys, that's it for now. Until next time, take care and have a good one.